Hello, good afternoon. My name's Emily Davis and um, I'm just doing a short video here just to give you some information about the fraud of council tax among uh, many other frauds that are being perpetrated by what we know as our government. So, uh, number one, um, I'm not here to give you any legal advice. You can make of this video what you will and you can go and uh, do your own research following watching this video. Um, what's contained herein is truth and fact um, and you can go to, um, it's been put as truth and fact into an affidavit of truth and fact by Baron David Ward and uh, you can download this document from discovertheevidence.org um, and I recommend that if you're watching this video um, and you haven't already seen that document, please go to that website, discovertheevidence.org and uh, download yourself a copy and read it. Very important. It's been uh, served on 657 MPs, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of the Crown and uh, many, many others. Now, <clears throat> what I'm here to tell you about today is uh, the fraud of council tax. So I'm going to get on with it. Try and make this short and sweet and uh, and c as clear as I can. Um, we've all received one of these recently. It's our what we know as our new council tax bill, telling us how much we need to pay and uh, when we need to pay this to our local authority. Um, which, um, as a matter of fact, is a sub office of a company, a private or for profit company called HM Parliaments and Governments PLC, which we know as the government who is in charge of us. <laughs> um, in actual fact, they're not in charge of us, they are just a private corporation. They have no more standing than McDonald's or Sainsbury's or Marks and Spencer's or any other PLC company out there. They're no different and uh, they have no authority over us. Now, <clears throat> what this is, or what many of us will think this is, is a bill. It's not a bill. It does not comply with the Bills of Exchange Act 1882. It's not signed. No person in the council have picked up one of these. No living being has signed their name in wet ink, which makes um, it a bill. What it actually is, is an offer of contract. Um, and if you don't know that, then you will tacitly agree to be bound by it. Um, so at the point of the new council tax year, which is uh, for the period the 1st of April 2016 to the 31st of March 2017, um, once you understand that it is an offer of contract, the only thing in this world that can legally bind you to anything is um, a formal contract um, whereby all parties disclose all terms and the terms are agreed to um, and all parties pick up a pen and sign in wet ink under their name and uh, agree this is what makes a legal agreement so there isn't a law it's not the law to pay council tax um, as a matter of fact there is no law the law um, is um, a lie there isn't any law anywhere not common law not statute law and what we refer to as law there are contracts um, what we agree to stand under as uh, moral human beings. So, <clears throat> uh, what what we think is law are actually acts and statutes of Parliament. These are not law. Um, they are company policy. Because as we've already just learned a few minutes ago, um, the government is not a not an impartial government. It is a private or for profit corporation called HM Parliaments and Governments PLC. So, the council tax that you've got here, Bill, um, is actually um, an offer of contracts and um, 
all of the uh, terms are not disclosed so there are clear requirements for a contract so I'll tell you what they are they are that all parties must be living living parties they must all lay out all of the terms um, they must all agree they um, must sign the contract in wet ink under their name with um, without uh, with wholeheartedly um, willingly without coercion not under duress and um, without the threat of loss or harm this is what makes a contract valid and it makes a legal agreement now if a person um, either party sorry if a party breaks the contract and the other party can lawfully enforce the contract if the contract doesn't meet any of the criteria of a contract i.e. it isn't given full disclosure or um, it's not signed correctly executed as it should be as per their own rules the companies act 2006 section 44 then it's null and void um, without disclosure the the contract can't be lawfully enforced because it's null and void so very important um, to understand what binds you and what binds you the only thing that binds you to anything in this world are contracts not laws or company policy rather of a private or for profit corporation who's assumed authority over you um, which they don't have they don't have unless HM parliaments and governments PLC can produce the circa 64.2 million signed contracts of the people then there is no government um, there is no consent to be governed so a statute the definition of a statute is a legislative rule that is given the force of law by consent so this means that it isn't a law this confirms it is not a law a statute an act isn't a isn't a law it is um, a rule regulation which if you consent you are bound um, if you sign a formal contract to say that you agree to um, uphold all the acts and statutes and do as HM parliaments and governments PLC say then you are bound and these if you breach these uh, breach these acts and statutes then you HM parliaments and governments and their sub offices so the police and etc etc local authority can lawfully enforce them um, but to my knowledge they don't have 64.2 million contracts of the people of this land known as the UK so um, <clears throat> what to do um, well if you do nothing and you just don't pay um, because you've done nothing and you haven't told them the facts how it is um, they are most probably going to uh, threaten you they're most probably going to employ a bailiff who's coming round to enforce the act um, which they will claim is the Local Government Finance Act 1992. Um, there you go. That is uh, which rule you are required to pay council tax under. It isn't the law and you can't be sent to prison for not paying um, or for not abiding by this act if you have not consented. So I'm going to read you a quick letter. Um, what I've done to my local council, Bromley Council. I've written to the CEO of Bromley Council and uh, it goes like this. Thank you for your correspondence of the 11th of March, council tax bill, um, the contents of which are noted and will be kept on file. One, we note that there is an offer of contract from the private all-for-profit corporation of London Borough of Bromley, who is a sub-office of HM Parliaments and Governments PLC, also a private all-for-profit corporation. Two, we note that there are limited terms disclosed. Three, 
we note that one of the terms is for us to transfer funds to the London Borough of Bromley for the sum of 123499 for the period 1st of April 2016 to the 31st of March 2017 for undisclosed products or services. We note that the offer of contract does not provide full disclosure. Number five, we note that the offer of contract is not executed correctly and signed in wet ink by either a director of London Borough of Bromley in the presence of an independent witness or alternatively by two officers of London Borough of Bromley as per the Companies Act 2006 section 44. After considering the private corporation's offer, on this occasion we have decided to decline and we return all contractual documents herewith unsigned and therefore we are unbound by any terms therein. We thank you again for your offer of contract and we re regret that we have to inform you that the terms are not suitable for us to engage in business. We have no desire to negotiate any further amended terms that London Borough of Bromley may offer in the future for the same period or any other specified future period. All correspondence will be kept on file without ill will or vexation. Yours sincerely. Uh, for and on behalf of the principal legal embodiment by the title of Miss Emily Davies, for and on behalf of the Attorney General of the House of Davies, for and on behalf of Baroness Emily Day of the House of Davies, Attorney at Law, no assured value, no liability, no errors or omissions accepted, all rights reserved and on a sunset. And there you go, I've signed, sealed my document with my thumbprint and I've signed in wet ink across here and decline the offer. I've sent back all the documents that uh, London Borough of Bromley have uh, seen fit to send me to try and deceive me but unfortunately it hasn't worked this time. So um, also last year, um, I wasn't actually aware of this information last year until ooh, probably about June or July um, and I decided well i've got a contract and uh, i've been deceived so any contract is null and void um so for last year i, I have a company who uh, london borough of bromley have employed called phoenix commercial collections limited they sent a bailiff to me in uh, november the 2nd of november and uh, i served a letter on him uh, and asked him for all of his details and uh, copies of the so-called liability order which I've not been able to obtain from the magistrate's court from the council itself or from uh, Phoenix who are claim making claims that I owe funds to the council so um, just to make it very clear um, that if a bailiff does come to your address um, you will need to ask them um, for um, if they claim they are an enforcement agent um, that they will need uh, to give to you um, the recognised licence authorised by a certifying named judge with his wet ink signature accompanied by an affixed court seal that's not a rubber stamp or a, a piece of paper which says the judge's name and the signature line's empty. The judge must sign in wet ink. He must affix an official court seal to that document which uh, grants the claimed enforcement agent authority to be an enforcement agent. You will also require their indemnity insurance along with photo ID, so a valid passport or a valid driving licence combined with a utility bill um, they must provide that to you um, they must also provide to you I'm just reading off of uh, my letter sorry um, not looking directly at the camera um, they must also provide to you the material evidence that any judge has the authority to grant authority to another you know um, 
what you must remember is that the judge is an employee of the private company, which is no different to McDonald's, HM Parliaments and Governments PLC. And so this fact has been confirmed by the Right Honourable Lord Chief Justice Sir Jack Beats in FBA. Um, you can see that in the document I mentioned right at the beginning, the Affidavit of Truth and Statement of Fact on discovertheevidence.org. Um, and it's been agreed that before anyone uh, who is a public servant, i.e. an employee of HM Parliaments and Governments PLC or any of their sub-offices, before they can make a claim under an act against you, um, they have to fulfil the requirements um, of their obligations that there is a formal contract between you and HM Parliaments and Governments PLC that you have signed an official contract saying that you agree to abide by all the acts and statutes of this private corporation. Now, if you haven't got this yet, you know, what I'm basically saying to you is that you are not bound by Sainsbury's company policy or McDonald's company policy or um, any other private PLC um, company's company policy unless you sign a formal contract to agree that, that you are bound by that company's company policy. So, um, and also, um, what you have to understand is that they can change their company policy as and when they see fit. So basically, they make it all up as they go along. Um, it's really easy. You know, you have this private... PLC, all-for-profit corporation, who are pretending to be a government. And they're not a government. You know, there is, where is the material evidence of all the people who voted this government in? Because as far as I'm aware, we all went to the ballot box, those of us that voted, and we marked an X on an undisclosed piece of paper without our name, without our address, without our signature. Now, if we were all voting... Um, for somebody to govern us, why would we not say, I am Miss Emily Davis of Rose Hill Road um, and I vote for David Cameron? Not. Um, you know, disclose, full disclosure. If you're asking somebody to govern you, if you're giving your authority somebody else to tell you what to do disclose that i mean anybody can make the results of of an election to however they want if all we're talking about as material evidence are loads of bits of paper that are not allocated to any people and just an x is marked anyone can make that up um so there is no material evidence of an elected government at all anywhere it doesn't exist. So therefore, there is no legal agreement. There is no um, formal contract where we have agreed, um, where there is full disclosure, um, where we have signed willingly, wholeheartedly, without coercion, not under duress, and uh, not under the threat of loss or harm. There, there are none of these contracts that exist as material evidence material evidence of these is required that means the physical material evidence the formal contract that's written down signed where all the living parties have picked up one of these and they've signed their names and taken responsibility for that so this goes to the same thing as when they tell you that there's a liability order because you haven't paid so the liability order must again be signed by the judge it must be sealed with an official court seal. The judge must be named so you know who that judge is, who has made this order. And what I can tell you is that there are no orders anywhere in this land that are valid. There is no court order anywhere that is signed in wet ink by a named judge and affixed with an official court seal. They don't exist because if they do sign them, this creates reverse liability. And they are then liable and you can deal with them. Um, as you see fit, um, if they cock up. So, 
that's just a little bit on council tax as i said um please go and do your own research don't take what i've said as gospel um it, it, it takes some months of research to go and find out all this information um it, it's taken me nearly a year to find out all, all what i've learned um <clears throat> and it's by no means legal advice to anybody uh, make of it what you will and go and do your own research um so that's about the size of it so um so there's my letter to the council declining their contract i will do a follow-up video at some point um if i get a reply when i get a reply um and if i get no reply i'll let you know as well um because that'd be quite interesting so um we will see um hope this has helped you um much love take care bye